summers ago, I traveled to Costa Rica. I was so excited to finally be traveling. I packed all my clothes, got my snacks ready, and was ready to travel. On the way to the airport, I could feel my natural adrenaline climbing. The smell of the airport brought me back to all my previous trips. COVID really set me back. I felt trapped and confined. But now the prospect of traveling again was back, and I was so excited. But once I arrived at the airport, of course, our flight was delayed. I was just waiting in the airport, waiting for a miracle. Now, as I was waiting, I saw many people deboarding the planes, children with young families, crying of tiredness after a long flight, carts of luggage filled to the brim, hoping that previous valuables don't fall off, looks of happiness, yet sorrow. When I saw this image, I instantly thought of the story of my grandparents, Nanima, Nanibapa, Dadima, and Dadabapa. They had shared with me their experiences of being a new immigrant and coming to a new country. Much of that must be difficult. For me, traveling was simply a luxury thanks to the sacrifices that my grandparents made. At that moment on my voyage, I wasn't thinking about my delayed flight. I wasn't thinking about the zip lining I would do. All I thought about was how lucky I am to be living in Canada. And with each delay, I was able to ponder about this even more. Hello, my name is Rosine Kasso. My grandparents were born and raised in East Africa, but had to flee their country of origin due to safety issues. They risked their lives in the hopes that future generations would have a brighter future. They worked many jobs and adjusted to their new culture while still trying to keep their own identity. Their struggles have enabled me to have a better future that is filled with opportunities. And today, my talk is gonna explore how recent immigrants are faced with many challenges and obstacles when coming to a new country. Immigrants who are able to find the right balance between preserving their cultural identity and adopting the ethos of the new society have a better chance of attaining success. Now when immigrants come to a country, they are overwhelmed with shock. Shock that they can't practice their doctorate degree. Shocked that they have to live in the poorest part of Toronto. Shocked that 10 years of education isn't recognized. Shocked that they have to work menial jobs. An article by the Poverty Hub, an initiative of the Canadian Poverty Institute, discusses the disadvantages that new immigrants face when coming to a country. And 36% of immigrants and refugees live in poverty. They're usually young, married, and educated, but unemployed. For new immigrants, the unemployment rate is substantially higher than those who are born in Canada. And unemployment rates only come closer to national averages after 10 years of being an immigrant. Now, for my grandparents, getting a job was difficult because they had no Canadian experience. I remember my dad and Papa would always say that whenever he would apply for a job, they would always ask him for Canadian experience. But being new to a country, of course he didn't have any. And as such, he would never get the job. And this cycle of, of poverty is common amongst immigrants and is an, an inevitable part of the resettlement process. This shows the importance of listening to new immigrants to ensure that we cater our services that are suitable for this population. Now, another key dilemma that new immigrants face is the ability to integrate within their new society. The phenomenon of culture shock can help us to understand the experiences that these immigrants face. The first stage is the honeymoon stage, where the immigrant is excited of being in the new country. They see everything with rose-colored glasses and are excited to be in this new country. Then we move into the anxiety stage, 
where the immigrant starts to worry about the challenges of coming to the new country. They ask, how many jobs will I need in order to pay the bills? And then we move into the adjustment stage. This stage, the immigrant starts to build roots and start to shape their own identity within the new culture. In this part of the culture shock, the immigrant starts to learn the language, which helps them to participate in civil society. The last part of culture shock is the acceptance stage, where the immigrant is fully able to integrate within the, the, the society and is able to merge their own language, food, and arts together. Now, the most successful immigrant is able to, is, is successfully with the four stages of culture shock if they have a growth mindset, community support, and government assistance. First of all, the immigrant needs to have the drive, passion, and resilience of wanting to be part of the new society. And they need to be open to change. The second is the community. By having access to community, community supports and places of worship, these bonds and relationships can help the immigrant to feel at home and supported. Lastly, the government support. By helping new immigrants settle in with taxing, language, and schooling. By having good policies and laws, it ensures that the immigrant will be able to live in the new adopted country. For my grandparents, attending communal prayers regularly helped them to rely on their faith, increase their networking opportunities, and gave them a sense of belonging. This was critical for their smooth transition. Now, I want to end my talk today by sharing with you a successful immigrant story. A person who has done this extremely well is the masterful musician named Suing Data. I learned about his fascinating story on the Aga Khan Museum's podcast titled This Being Human. Sumik is an award winner of the Aga Khan Music Award. He has also played with Beyonce and has his own charity called the Sumik Data Arts Charity. But you're probably wondering, what makes Sumik so special? Sumik plays an instrument called a soro. He explains in his podcast that it was by accident that he founded his, gr his grandmother's old instrument. When he first started tuning the instrument, he fell in love with the sound. Sumik was able to combine his own traditional Indian classical music with Western music. This allowed him to use his own identity and mix it with his adopted country. In conclusion, this example shows us that if you are able to adapt in your environment, you are able to flourish in a way that allows you to be true to your own unique self and identity. Thank you.